Okay. Um, yeah. All right. So our next speaker will be Laura Williams. So, um, uh, thank you very much. It's a great uh, pleasure and an honor to be here celebrating Sasha Gontroff's birthday. Uh, over the years, I've been very much inspired by, by many of, of your papers, including those on cluster varieties and higher Teshmuller theory, um, hot Gontroff duality conjectures, and uh, I guess the, the paper of, uh, of Sasha's, which is most relevant to my, to my talk today, is a paper on scattering amplitudes and the positive Grassmannian, which was um, his paper with Arkani Hamed, Borgeli, Kachazo, um, Postnikov, and, and Trinka. So, all right, so let me give a little outline of what I want to speak about. So I want to tell you, first of all, what is Amplitudehedron. This is an object that was introduced by Nima Arkani Hamed and Yaroslav Trinka in the context of scattering amplitudes and n equals four super Yang Mills, but it has a very, very concrete definition in terms of the Grassmannian. And then I will tell you a little bit about um, connection with cluster algebras and, um, and also sort of surprising connection to um, the moment map and, and the hypersimplex. So, all right, so this talk, by the way, is meant to be totally elementary. So if there's any questions at any point, please feel free to interrupt. Yes. Larger font. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I can definitely use larger font. And, and if I slip up. That size is visible from Across. Okay. Okay, great. Great. So I will aim to write in that font. Okay. So good. <laughs> so the totally. Ah, thank you. <laughs> I may need us some assistance with this from time to time. So the totally non negative Grassmannian denoted GRKN uh, greater or equal to zero is a subset of the real, <laughs> thank you, Grassmannian. Um, where all Pluker coordinates are non-negative. So let me that. So points in the non-negative Grassmannian can be written concretely as row spans of matrices C, where C rank K by N matrix and the Pluker coordinate P sub I of C is non-negative for all I a K element subset of the numbers one through N. And, uh, and recall that for I a K element subset of the numbers one through N, if I have my K by N matrix C, 
the Plucher coordinate P sub I of C is the determinant of the K by K submatrix of C located in columns capital I. Okay. So this object was um, studied in works of Lustig and Posnikov, um, papers of Lustig for the general case G mod P and Posnikov in the case of the Grassmannian. Okay, now I want to tell you what is the amplitudehedron. And so now let's fix positive numbers K and an M. Set K plus M is most N. And we'll also choose a matrix Z. And this matrix Z is an N by K plus M matrix with maximal minors strictly positive. And K plus M. And we'll just say maximal minors strictly positive. So now this is the definition of R. Hamed and Trinka. So we're going to let the tilde be a map from the totally non-negative Grassmannian to a related Grassmannian of K planes and K plus M space. And it's defined in a very kind of um, naive way, it's just matrix multiplication. So if C is a matrix, K by N matrix, representing a point in the TNN Grassmannian, C tilde of C is just given by multiplying matrices C by Z. CZ is a, um, Oh, um, K by K plus M matrix and um, lemma, it has full rank, so it represent, represents a point in the Grassmannian of K plans and K plus M space. And so this is the map C tilde and the amplitudehedron. is just the image of the non-negative Grassmannian under this map. Okay, any questions so far? Okay, great. Um, so, uh, so I'm not gonna say a lot about the motivation, but I will say that when M equals four, scattering amplitudes in N equals four super Yang mills, can be computed by taking, quote unquote, the volume of this amplitudehedron. You're actually integrating a form. Um, and, um, and they wanted to give a kind of geometric interpretation of, of scattering amplitudes. And it turns out to be, um, they turn out to be encoded by this image of the positive Grassmannian inside this related Grassmannian. And Z tilde is kind of encoding um, momenta of external particles. Okay, so um, so let me. Uh huh. Can you tell us what the dimension of the is? Oh, great question. It is full dimensional inside of the Grassmannian, so it has dimension k times m. So yes, so a priori, of course, it depends very much on z tilde, but sort of combinatorial properties of this object appear to not depend. There's mean? very little proved along these lines, but um, it seems to have very little dependence. Uh -huh. Volume is it combinatorial? Oh, the volume? Yeah. Um, no, no, but, um, but the sort of, com so 
I'll say a little bit more. Um, the way one wants to sort of get at the volume is by triangulating this object and the study of these triangulations is quite combinatorial. Certainly the volume. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, of course, absolutely. Okay, so I'll just explain a few examples. So feel a little bit for what this might look like. So if k plus m equals n and z is the identity map, then of course this dehedron just recovers the TNN Grassmannian. Any any questions? Um, okay. All right. So you can think of amplitudehedron as a generalization of the TNN Grassmannian. If k is one and m is two, then um, let's think about it as follows. So we can write our matrix Z in terms of the row vectors n by k plus m, but k plus m now is three. So, um, so let's see one. Cn rows of z. In other words, points in P2. And now positivity of the minors of z implies that these points in P2 are oriented, say, clockwise when we draw them in the plane. And now C, our K by N matrix, um, in this case, a, a one by three matrix um, is, uh, well, okay. It's a little bit silly for me to draw so many entries for a one by three matrix, but I just want E sub I to be the, the zero one vector with a, a one in the ith position. And then CZ, is zi so in the image of of our z tilde map we do achieve all of those points of this polygon and then generic matrices c are positive combinations of the e sub i's and so we will in fact get all points in this Polygon in P2. So, um, in this example, our amplitudehedron is exactly a polygon in P2. And more generally, for K is 1 and M um, uh, general, we're going to get a cyclic polytope in projective space. Okay. So, now, I mentioned that a physics goal is computing the uh, volume of the amplitudehedron. This is computing scattering amplitudes. And so, um, and so we want to calculate the volume by um, triangulating the amplitudehedron. And so let me tell you uh, how we can approach that. So the amplitudehedron is the image of the TNN Grassmannian under this map Z tilde. And we understand this um, space, the TNN Grassmannian, extremely well. So work of reach in the case of G mod P, Kosmikov in the case of the Grassmannian, um, showed that there is a cell decomposition. Oh, my font size may be getting too small. Uh, is that right? Should I try to make it much bigger? Okay. Uh, silence, but I will try to make it bigger. So 
So there's a cell decomposition of this, this TNN Grassmannian. And in the case of the Grassmannian, it's extremely concrete. So the cells are called positroid cells. And each is defined by specifying that some of the Plucker coordinates are strictly positive and the rest are equal to zero. So if you are familiar with the matroid stratification of the Grassmannian, this positroid stratification is precisely defined by taking the matroid stratification of the Grassmannian and just restricting to the non-negative part. Um, but, the, but the miracle is that um, unlike the case of the, of the matroid stratification of the real Grassmannian, where the strata are topologically very, very bad, that's the Niaf's universality theorem, in the case of the TNN Grassmannian, when you, when you restrict the, the matroid strata to the TNN Grassmannian, you get honest topological cells. Okay. All right, so we understand this TNN Grassmannian extremely well, and the amplituhedron is the image of it. So we want to understand the amplituhedron by um, looking at images of the cells under this map. And so there's a lot of very natural questions. Um, am I allowed to use this board, or is that off limits? Okay. Oh, okay, okay. Ah, thank you. Only the left half. Okay. All right. Okay. So here are some natural questions. So when is the tilde? injective on one of these positroid cells. Um, and we will particularly, so, so given that the amplitudehedron has dimension k times m, we are particularly interested in understanding the km dimensional cells over here, which map injectively to the amplitudehedron. Is there a cluster variety structure on the images of such, such cells? Um, okay, yes, I need to. Oh, can I, can I write behind here? Is that okay? Oh, thank you. When does a collection of images of cells together to file? Amplitudehedron. How many tiles comprise a tiling? Um, is there a kind of a secondary fan governing tilings? of the answer Okay, so there's many, many questions. And <laughs> I, I'm not getting paid for this. <laughs> <laughs> 
when I was in Berkeley one year, I was teaching a 300 person class in the chemistry building and all of the blackboards were sort of really high out of out of my reach. And um, it was well, I found a solution after a while, which was I, um, I started bringing a crowbar to class. <laughs> but I did not bring my crowbar with me today. So, um, so we understand the answers to these questions quite well in very small examples. So we understand them very well when, for example, K is one, when we get a cyclic polytope. We also understand them very well when n is one, in which case this object is um, homeomorphic to a bounded complex of a cyclic hyperplane arrangement. That was joint work with my former student, Stephen Karp. And, uh, and recently we've understood um, almost everything for M equals two. And that is primarily what, what I want to talk about today and is work with um, Lukowski and Parisi and separately with Parisi and Sure, Sherman Bat. Can you say a little bit more about what is this middle line? This one here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah so, um, so when m equals one, um, you, so what happens is that this, so this matrix Z is a positive, positive matrix, and it gives rise to a, um, a cyclic, it's, it's rows encode, um, encode um, the equations of a cyclic hyperplane arrangement. And it turns out it, that in this case, that M equals one is in fact homeomorphic to the bounded complex of that cyclic hyperplane arrangement. Oh, yes, 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 yes. It just means that you take a matrix, a positive matrix. So this is like combinatorially like a Vandermond matrix. You interpret rows as defining equations of hyperplanes. So, so for example, um, a cyclic, so in the dimension two case, a cyclic hyperplane arrangement might look like this collection of hyperplanes I've drawn. And many regions are unbounded and some of them are bounded. The bounded ones look like this. And then what I'm saying is that the Amplitohedron looks like that bounded complex of this cyclic hyperplane arrangement. What's the definition of cyclic complex arrangement? Of what? This is a cyclic loop. What is cyclic hyperplane arrangement? Oh, it just means coming. Oh, it's just called cyclic, sort of analogous to cyclic polytope. It just means that um, that uh, the hyperplanes have the like their their um, the rows come from a positive matrix. I mean, it's like a Vandermont matrix, for example. And it has a sort of particularly nice um, combinatorics. The uh, okay. yeah. Uh -huh. Is there a duality between the first two cases? Yeah. So that's an intriguing question whether there's a duality between k equals one and m equals one. I don't know of any. I don't know how to say anything sort of concrete in that direction. But it does. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. It's kind of a mystery, actually. Yeah, I mean, in fact, in fact, sort of conjecturally, there's um, a duality between, so there, there is a duality between K and N minus M minus K and conjecturally also a duality with M over two, um, but, uh, but that doesn't, well, okay. Maybe I just shouldn't, shouldn't say anything. Yeah, so it looks very, it looks very, um, 
suggestive, but I don't know how to say anything about a duality. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. Maybe I should keep up my definition of Tiet and Grassmannian. <laughs> All right. You can also use the book. To uh, yes, yes. It's just he's been quicker than. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, sure. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, so let me just say a little bit now about um, about uh, tiles and the and the cluster structure that we see. So <clears throat> So if So if the map Z tilde from TNN Grassmannian onto the amphitohedron um, is injective on a KM dimensional cell, that's phi. So this, this thing here has dimension k times m. Then we say that the image of the cell is a. Um, so now I can tell you in the case m equals two precisely what the tiles are. And this was conjectured by Bukowski, Bukowski, Bradlin, and Volovich, and then um, we proved it with Parisi and Sherman Bennett. And so what the statement says is that z tilde is injective. Okay, now I will test out these handy buttons. So it is injective on the two K dimensional cell. Pi. If and only if the cell has the following form. And um, so I will describe this combinatorially. So we will choose tau. Tau is going to be a collection of k non overlapping triangles in an n gon. So let me draw that. So we're choosing k non overlapping triangles in the n-gon, and we will draw the dual types. Yeah. 
So I'm going to put a wide vertex in every shaded triangle and solid vertices. The corners. And now we're going to make Castellan matrix. So I'll, I'll just explain what's Castellan matrix in the example. So we have here three different triangles or three different um, hollow vertices. So I'm going to write down a matrix with three rows. And um, there's going to be seven columns because we're inside of a seven gone. I've been putting um, parameters in entries corresponding to um, whenever a solid vertex is incident to a hollow vertex. And so that's where these, the um, support of the rows is coming from. So rows are indexed by hollow. columns indexed by solid. And now if we let the parameters of i beta i gamma i range over r greater than zero, we get a cell, which I'll refer to. So let's see this yellow graph I'm going to refer to as g hat of tau. Tau is my K non-overlapping triangles. G hat of tau is my dual graph. And so if we let our parameters range over R greater than zero, we get a cell, which is um, of dimension 2K. I have 3K parameters here, but you can rescale every row. So it's really a 2K dimensional cell. And the statement is that the amplitudehedron map is injective in this case on a 2K dimensional cell, if and only if it has this form. Okay. So I want to um, now say something about how we see a cluster structure, but for that, I need some good coordinates. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm a little bit lost. Uh, what is the setting? What are the number numerators here? Am I equal to two case or am I equal to two case? Oh, oh, you mean the setting right here? Yes, 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 yes. yes. Sorry. Um, yes, it's m equals two. That's the third index right here. Yes. Any other questions? Okay, all right, so we need some coordinates. Those coordinates for the amplitohedron, which is the image of the TNN Grassmannian and lives inside the Grassmannian of K planes and K plus M space. And, um, this will help us to make a connection to, to cluster algebras. Specifically, we're going to need to use some coordinates that live on this space. So as before, fixing our K, N, and M, and our matrix Z, K plus M, with rows Z1 through Zn. And now, given y 
an element of the Grassmannian of K planes in K plus M space. And this Y we're going to view as a matrix in the notation I write down in a moment. And indices I1 through IM, just numbers from one through N, will let bracket Y ZI1 ZI2 ZIM be the determinant of the matrix that I get if I put my K by K plus M matrix Y on top and then I put these rows ZI1 through ZIM down below. And so we're going to call this a Mr. Coordinate, and these were first appeared in a paper of Arkani and Hamed, Hugh Thomas, and Yaroslav Trinka. And it's not hard to show. It's not hard to show that, um, that such an element y is uniquely determined by, by the twister coordinates. Yeah, I will, I will switch. So I'll just write what I said. GR K comma K plus M is uniquely determined by its twister twister coordinates. Okay. So now let me um, start to make a connection to cluster algebras. So. So just for notation, I'll let C pi denote the image of the positroid cell S pi. And now um, these images of cell, so the amplitude is not a polytope, but we in some ways, it behaves well we want to kind of think of it as some kind of generalization of a polytope and so we want to talk about things like facets so we'll say that z pi prime is a facet of z pi if it is maximal by inclusion such that Cell S pi prime is contained in the closure of S pi and Z pi prime is contained in the boundary of Z pi and has co dimension one. Okay, so now um, here's the, the first connection to cluster algebras, cluster adjacency theorem. And it was first conjectured by 
same group of names that I wrote a moment ago, Bukowski, Parisi, Stradlin, and Volovich, and then we verified with Parisi and Sherman Bennett. And um, this is again for the M equals two amphitohedron. And uh, so let's suppose that Z G have tau is a file. So this means it is the image of a 2K dimensional cell in the TNN Grassmannian, which is mapped injectively into the amplitohedron. And each facet lies on a hypersurface where the twister coordinate y is the i is j is zero. And Corresponding collection of Clouper coordinates Eij, right? So I'm just sort of formally replacing this twister coordinate y is the i is j with the Plucher coordinate for G2n Pij. So this collection labeling facets. consists of compatible cluster variables for GR2n. So the Grassmannian has a very well-known cluster structure. Cluster variables um, include uh, Plucher coordinates. And so there's a notion of um, when Plucher coordinates are comprised compatible cluster variables and in the case of, of G2n, a collection PIJ um, is compatible if they correspond to non-crossing diagonals in a polygon. Okay. And moreover, if some other super coordinate PHL is compatible with this collection, then the twister coordinate y h z l has a fixed sign on the interior. Of our tile. Okay. So somehow when you look at the tiles, these images of of 2K dimensional cells in the amphitohedron, which map injectively, and you look at um, the description of their boundary, what you're seeing is compatible cluster variables. Um, so we conjecture, we conjecture this is true um, more generally, but it's, um, but we don't know how to prove it um, beyond this case. Um, so this suggests that a cluster structure is hiding on these tiles. And so I can say, I'll say a little bit about that. Okay, so um, yeah, so I'll just say, okay. cluster structure on the tiles, and um, and uh, let's see, I will, I guess I'll draw it, um, I'll draw it superimposed on this picture. So, and maybe actually maybe. I want a slightly more interesting example.
okay. So let me explain. Uh, where is our where is our quiver? Um, okay, but first first let me just recall that tiles <laughs> correspond to a um, a collection tau of k non overlapping tiles in an n bond and um, and this collection of non-overlapping triangles will consist of a certain number of, of shaded polygons. So, um, so now in each polygon, we'll choose a kind of which boundary arc h i to j i is h i less than j i, and um, yes, yes, this is always this is the k from the amphitohedron a n k m. Yes, yes. Um, and so now to get our quiver, it's going to be the usual quiver associated to the polygon, except I will just ignore these distinguished boundary arcs. So let me draw the quiver. So I'll have mutable, um, mutable vertices corresponding to internal diagonals and frozen like this. Okay. Okay, so there's this kind of simple recipe, which is that um, arrows are directed so that they go around clockwise inside of a triangle. Okay, so that is our, our quiver. And then the, the cluster variables wind up being simply ratios of twister coordinates, except you have to be careful about the sign. So cluster variables, um, so, A to B. You got three lines in the upper, in the left quadrant, or four lines in the top quadrant. Um, sorry, what are the three lines you're talking about? Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, so these are arrows of the quiver. But why would you got three on one and two or on four? You mean three arrows here? Yeah. Ah, so um, uh, so so what I'm doing in each shaded polygon is I will put a mutable cluster variable on each internal diagonal. And then I will put a frozen variable on the external edges of my polygon. But oh, in so, so on the right, one, two, three, four, five, oh, pentagon. pentagon, yeah, 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 yeah. But in, in every polygon, there's one, there's one edge I ignore because I'm going to set the corresponding variable equal to one. It's kind of choosing an affine chart. Um, so let's let A to B arc contain in some piece of I. And then we define our cluster, our cluster variable is going to be. So just morally speaking, it's, it should be thought of as the twister coordinate, y, z, a, z, b. But we have to sort of normalize within each polygon. And so I'm normalizing based on the value of um, this sort of chosen um, boundary arc. 
and then there's there's a there's a sign here which is easy to write down but you have to choose it carefully to make sure your cluster variables are positive is there a question so um there are these distinguished boundary arts here the yellow ones um so this this here is kind of a normalization corresponding to a particular side of the polygon yeah okay yeah maybe i give too much detail morally speaking the cluster variables should be thought of exactly as as the twister coordinates okay ah so like it could be like this like this arc like the arc from three to seven um the arc from three to seven has associated to it a cluster variable indexed by this red dot which is proportional to the twister coordinate um y z3 z7 yeah okay so anyway so this this gives um this gives cluster variables and then the statement is that this gives us a structure um of cluster variety on these tiles okay um okay so yeah so i don't want to give too many details but um but this gives cluster variety structure on the tiles for the m equals to amplitude feature. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Ah, oh, thank you. Uh, erase. Okay, all right. So, um, okay. So now let me, um, so I said at the beginning, one is interested in computing the volume of the amplitohedron. And so you want to understand it as a union of tiles. And um, so a tiling of the amplitohedron is defined to be a collection of tiles such that the tiles are disjoint and their union is dense in the amplitohedron. And um, so we understand by now quite a lot about these tilings. Um, so I'll just say, tell you how you can get one. Which is a theorem of bound Hay. So um, if one considers the n minus two choose k collections of k, non-overlapping triangles, which all have that's one, then the corresponding tiles give a. However, there are many, many others. And um, the question is, can we understand all of them? And in some sense, answer well is yes and interestingly the collections of tie lengths of the amplitudehedron are very very connected to the moment map and matroid subdivisions so um 
maybe that's the last thing that I'll say. So, um, so we have a moment now from the Grassmannian, which you can restrict to the non negative Grassmannian if you like, defined by mu of a Grassmannian element is this sum of squares of Zucker coordinates times the zero one vector EI normalized by the sum of the squares of Pluker coordinates, where this is the corresponding zero one vector in RN. And um, if you look at the image of the TNN Grassmannian under the moment map, you get the hypersimplex which is the convex hull of all of the E sub i's. Okay, so this is an n minus one dimensional polytope in Rn. And you wrote R. Oh, sorry. Rn. And, uh, and you can also look at moment map images of positroid cells. And this is the positroid the moment map image is what's called a positroid polytope. And it's the convex hull of all of the E sub i's corresponding to Pluker coordinates, which are strictly positive on the cell. Okay. And so what um, was very, very surprising to us is that the moment map for the, for the TNN Grassmannian seems to be very connected to the amplitohedron map. Conjecture with Lukowski and Parisi, proved with Parisi and Sherman Bennett, and says the following. There's a bijection from Loopless cells of the TNN Grassmannian. Loopless just means um, you don't have a identically zero column. Full loopless cells of the TNN Grassmannian such that. The moment map is injective on an n minus one dimensional cell of this Grassmannian, if and only if the amplitohedron map is injective on the corresponding 2k dimensional cell as pi hat of this other Grassmannian. On this side of the picture, we have the Grassmannian of K plus one planes in N space. And on this side, we have Grassmannian of K planes in N space. And moreover, mu, a collection, mu of S pi is a tiling of the hypersimplex if and only if the corresponding tiles is a tiling of the amplitudehedron. So this was um, this is the sort of very surprising thing. On the left hand side of the picture, we're talking about the moment map, and we're talking about the map of the Grassmannian k plus one planes and n space into um, a polytope, the hypersimplex. So this is all an n minus one dimensional picture having to do with polytopes. And on the right hand side, we're talking about a different Grassmannian, k planes and n space. And now, and we're in a different dimension, 2k dimensions. And we're talking about the amplitohedron, which is not a polytope. And yet we have this sort of very precise dictionary between the two sides. I know I'm already a little over time, so I'll just stop there. Yeah.
questions it's uh, very intriguing so what is the dictionary so yeah. how do you parameterize uh tiling in the amplitude hydron using tiling in the hypersimplex right 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 so um you mean like what is this bijection yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so um so uh i mean I could give a complete answer to that question in three minutes, or I could give a hand wavy definition in 30 seconds. Um, anyway, but so as, as you know, cells of the positive Grassmannian are in bijection with things like um, decorated permutations and reduced playback graphs. And so this bijection is extremely simple. Say on the level of the permutations, it's like a shift by one. You just sort of cyclically rotate your permutation by one. On the level of playback graphs, there's also a very easy way to go from playback graph over here to the playback graph over here. And this map, I should say, is a, um, so in your paper with our Connie Hamed and six others, I think, um, there was a kind of map between, what are they called? Um, there's a map between like, a, oh, maybe I didn't write it, um, but there's like a twister side of the story and a momentum twister side of the story. And so you have a map on cells connecting those kinds of coordinates. And this is like an M equals two analog of them, that map. Oh. But the strange thing is that our object on this side seems to be the hypersimplex and the moment map, which, so there's no, like there's no information about any kind of external data of particles on this side, even though there is on that side. So it's just weird. Thank you. And one brief question. Uh, so do you have a guess what happens when M equals four? So on M equals four, yes, yes. So on M equals four, so there is an object called the momentum amplitudehedron, which, um, which was defined a few years ago um, for M equals four by Lukaski, uh, Ferro, um, Parisi. And the M equals four amplitudehedron is supposed to be the object on this side. Yes, and there's also a definition of momentum amplitudehedron for any even m, but for m equals two, I don't know. The right object is hypersimplex. M equals four is physical, so yes, thank you. Any other questions? Are there questions from Zoom? Okay, I have one quick question. So. Uh, in here you said this gives a cluster structure on the tiles. What does that mean? It doesn't mean the coordinate ring is a cluster algebra. Or... Yeah, so that, that's a great question. And it's sort of a weird phenomenon because the amplitudehedron is this KM dimensional object. And, um, and so normally in the situations where I've seen cluster structures before, the um, the cluster structure has to do with the totally positive part of the variety, which is like this one big, like top dimensional piece. But for the amplitudehedron, instead, we see actually um, n minus two choose k top dimensional pieces, and each one individually has a cluster structure. And I don't know to what extent they talk to each other, or at least I don't understand exactly how they talk to each other. But it's different cluster structures of top dimension on the n minus two choose k pieces. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, so if anybody else is aware of, of situations where you have a sort of cluster variety structure on lots of top dimensional pieces, I'd be interested to know. Okay, let's thank Laura again. So we will resume at uh, 12. Yeah, no problem. Yeah.